Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome to session 8 of Principles of Management course. I am your instructor Dr. Shikha N. Khera, faculty at Delhi School of Management, Delhi Technological University. Students, this session is going to be dedicated to classification and approaches to planning. Having a quick recapitulation of the previous session where we discussed about the concept of planning and various sub planning portions like the plans can be based on or classified as time horizon based on the scope and also based on the frequency of their use. This is what we have already covered. We shall be taking it further and now we will discuss the classification of planning to begin with in this session, the classification of planning based on the specificity. Let us understand this topic. The classification based on specificity has four components to it that is specific plans, directional plans, contingent plans and scenario planning. These are quite interesting plans students I am sure you will enjoy learning these details. Moving on to the first kind of plan under specificity which includes specific plans. The term suggests are something which is they are very concrete plans, very much in line with what goal has to be achieved and the path is clearly defined. We also call them as well defined plans. They do not allow any kind of different interpretations by different managers. So, clarity of organizational goals and objectives is an important prerequisite for formulating these specific plans. They ensure two things very clearly. One is conformity, conformity to the goals and also consistency. If conformity and consistency occurs, then we say that the plan is quite specific. These are plans which can be enjoyed by the organization which have two parameters that is internal and external environmental stability. If the environment is stable, it becomes easier for the organization to have specific plans. So, example here is that a plan that aims at cutting the production cost by 3 percent. So, this is the aim or goal in one year can be a specific plan where specific target of 3 percent is being set for the cutting of production cost. Further, these plans are capable of minimizing and eliminating what is a big trouble in the organization that is ambiguity and misunderstanding and other problems related to it. Why they do so? Because they are highly specific plans. After specific plans based on the specificity, we have directional plans. Directional plans are general plans that offer a great deal of flexibility. Why they ex uh, give us flexibility? Because they are general in nature and they can be modified as and when the situation warrants for it. The distinct feature of these plans is that they are flexible to enable the organization to respond quickly to any unexpected developments in the environment. These plans focus, provide focus to the managers without tying them to any predetermined and specific course of action. So, that means they are though giving focus to the manager, but they are giving ample amount of creative platform to the manager to react quickly to any unforeseen scenario. These plans do not have 
something which we call as specificity as we have in specific plants. So, thus there can be some deviations. Now, if we may differentiate between the specific plan and the directional plan, directional plan would be such that if you have to go from A to B, so this is the directional plan which says that this is the path you can reach through from A to B through this direction. While when it comes to specific plans and we have to reach from A to B, this specific plan will define the decided path. So, this decided path is called as specific plan and this is called as the directional plan. Now, as you can see here the directional plan is only letting us know that this is the path you may follow. Thus, in that case there is no predetermined or specific course of action and for any unspecific or unexpected development you can respond quickly and bring the change in your direction. The third kind of plan based on the specificity is called as contingency plan. Now, contingency plan is a plan which is responded to any unforeseen scenario and situations that take place. There can be situations like strike, change in political system, change in export import policies, there can be situations like accidents in the organization. So, for any kind of unforeseen scenario, if such occurs, a manager needs to have a contingent plan or what we call as a plan B, which enables the manager to come out of that unforeseen scenario. Contingency plans are specific actions to be taken in organization in case of crisis or any kind of setbacks. These plans become functional in the event of unexpected happenings in the organization. Organizations which are operating in highly uncertain environment, they usually develop contingent plans along with strategic plans, tactical plans and operational plans. Now, since we have already discussed strategic, tactical and operative plan, I would like to have a connect between all these four. So, if we may say the strategic plans are the broad plans while and done by top management. After strategic plan, we break them into the tactical plans and what are they? They are narrow plans as compared to the strategic plans and after that we go on to the operational plans, operational plans we are, which are the specific procedures to be carried out. Now what happens if in case these primary plans fail and in case of the failure of the primary plan we have something called as contingency plan. So, this is the interrelationship between the all plans. So, contingency planning is the process of identifying what may go wrong in future, getting ready with the coping up strategies for that and any kind of solutions so that we can deal with that challenging situation. After contingency planning, we have scenario planning as one of the classifications based on the specificity of the plan. Now, let us see what is scenario planning. As students you all understand scenario is planning is nothing but identifying or highlighting different scenes and what do we mean by highlighting different scenes here? Here the manager anticipates every kind of path and scenario or any kind of situation that may occur during their working process, which may lead to different outcomes. So, multiple managers they sit together, they discuss and try to find out that what one path will lead to whether an optimistic outcome or a pessimistic outcome and if such optimistic and pessimistic outcome comes in, then how manager has to deal with. They also decide upon various solutions for each path and each outcome. They build different scenarios, they brainstorm and discuss together. This is called as scenario planning. Let us see some theoretical content of it. 
So scenario planning is basically a modern forecasting technique which is used in the planning process. The risk may arise from in internal factors and thus a scenario or a description of scene is planned by the manager. In this type of planning, the mental discussion between various managers takes place. And this is about learning about the future, they discuss about how the future is going to be, what kind of uncertainties can occur, different forces which will affect the organization from the external environment. So basically scenario planning is nothing but an opportunity to generate a clear and imaginative background for thinking on how to act in the future. Further, they enhance the and perfect the manager's perception of possible future scenarios through mental rehearsals even before it actually occurs. And this, this scenario planning also allows for anticipation of unexpected events which is very important if a manager is able to anticipate any unexpected event the result is he can save lot of resources of the organization both in terms of tangible resources and intangible resources and also help the organization to remain within the given direction that has been proposed initially by the top management. Further they enhance and perfect the managers perception of possible future scenarios. Now that we have discussed about various planning and classification of planning, another important aspect under organization is the goal. The goal which is the, the basic framework on which plans are made unless until you have your aim, target, objective or goals, how can you plan? So what are goals in the organization? Let us have some overview about it. So planning will be a futile exercise for any organization if it does not have well defined and realistic goals. So these are the characteristics of goals that they must have. As such goals guide the actions of planner from beginning till the end. So they are the guiding platforms for the manager. And even for you probably students, whatever are your aims, they become the guiding platforms. They are also the foundation for all planning activities and in the beginning it provides direction to planning exercise while in the end it gives the control. So goals are thus highly critical to organizational goal achievement. They are also the desired outcomes for various individuals, groups and entire organization. So it can be that in an organization member who is at lower level has some individual goals while someone above him has the group level variable. So they have their own goals and the entire organization mission also works. It provides direction and gives the performance evaluation criteria. Organization can have different kinds of goals for serving different purposes. But what is required is that all goals must be aligned together so that they reach to the common goal. Effective organizational goals will have hierarchical alignment. So hierarchical alignment means this is what we also called as a means and chain. Now what happens in organization? The top management has their own goal. What is the goal? The goal is that we have to increase the market share by 10% by next annual year. Next then we have the middle managers, these middle managers may have their goal that you have to in order to have an increase of 10% we need to increase the profitability probably by 20% then we can reach to this target. Then we have the lower level manager who will say that increase the production by say 25% because of which we can reach to the goal of. 20% of profitability and finally the frontline managers may have their own goal which say that work in two shifts, two to three shifts so that we have this increase of 25% productivity which in turn will gain the increase of 20% profitability and hence we can reach to the 
market share. So, this chain is also called as means and end chain where every end serves as the mean for the other. So, these this is means and end chain in the organization which is driven by nothing but goals in organization. Further the goals can be known by different names. Now, what are the different names of goals? Also organization call them as mission or objectives. Also they are called as road maps for the organization. They have some common benefits to organization and they are as follows. They offer guidance and unified direction to organization. Goals and plans are capable of effective implementation of one and other. They also keep employees focused in their activities as because of goals the employees are always aware of the expected outcomes they have to deliver. Goals are transparent and rewarding and can be valuable source of motivation for the employee which is highly required in organizations without which no organization can achieve their goals and mission. Thus, the keeping high morale of the employees and giving them challenging and result oriented goals will help them also have a growth pattern in their career. Goals are also effective instruments for performance evaluation. Now, students see what are the benefits of having goals for organizations. So many multiple benefits which make the goals a critical factor in organizational success. They serve as performance evaluation criteria and also a control measure. They also become the standards for comparing the actual performance of employee and determining their efficiency levels. Now, these goals as we have already discussed are divided into two category missions and objectives. They are since goals are the preferred and predetermined results organizations seek to achieve through their planned actions. Now, however, the organizations they tend to call goals by different names because of their scope, purpose and direction. Starting off with first what is the mission of the organization? These are nothing but the official goals of organization and also they are the reason for the existence of organization because of this mission only the, exist the organization got established. So, what is a mission statement? A mission statement provides separate identity to each organization and that is the best part of mission that it provides a separate identity. To whom it provides separate identity to the organization and also sets its business apart from competitors and others. And a mission statement normally contains what information? Mission statement has information on first the purpose of the organization, its existence, why it is existing who are going to get benefited by the organization like whether it is the customer, public in general or employees and for whom the organization exists. Also mission statements gives us inf information like that what is going to be the impact of its existence in the society. So, a mission statement typically offers broad guidelines to the managers when they determine priorities, they make decisions and they allocate resources. I think it is very well understood by you by now students that what role mission statement plays in organization. How important a mission statement is when it comes to devising upon that what are the roles and responsibilities or the corporate social responsibilities of organization both towards the internal customers and the external customers. A mission statement is also the formal expression of an organization's vision statement. Now, here if we spend to time to understand what is the difference between the vision and the mission. Vision is the thought process or philosophy of organizational members. The ones who are the promoters of organizations or entrepreneurs, they think a vision for an organization like a vision of organization can be always soaring high 
this means that the entrepreneur or the manager wishes to have a continuously growth oriented thought process and this vision needs to be aligned with the mission statement that is the goal of organization that we soar high up in the sky how by providing benefits to society to other stakeholders and to the internal customer in general. So, the vision statement is the statement of organization future ambitions which carries various values, beliefs and attitudes of the organization. Mission statement also forms the basis for formalizing tomorrow's objectives and goals and they also act as communication tool for the organization. It, the mission also provides legitimacy to the existence of organization and improves its image in the eyes of the public and both these parameters being legitimate organizations and having a good brand value or goodwill or reputation in customers eye is very important for sustainability of any organization. The mission statement also of some leading organization is presented below in the table that you people can go through. We may quickly read through one or two mission statements to understand how they depict the intention of the organization clearly. Like if we see the Tata Group mission statement, it says at Tata Group our purpose is to improve the quality of life of communities we serve. We do this through leadership in sectors of national economic significance to which group brings a unique set of capabilities. ITC group says that to enhance the wealth generating capability of the enterprise in globalizing environment delivering superior and sustainable stakeholder value. So, here you can see both the organization focus both on increasing their capabilities, earning powers and simultaneously giving back to the society and doing some kind of beneficial work for all who belong to the society at large. The next tool that we have to understand are the objectives. After mission, the second part of this uh, statement is objectives. Now, what are objectives? The term objectives and goals are often used interchangeably though in the organization, but there is a subtle difference between objectives and goal. And what is the difference in that? What differentiates between objectives and goals? Time span and specificity. These are the two factors which differentiate between objectives and goals. How? Like objectives are specific and short term targets to be achieved before goals can be reached. So, you can believe in here that goal can be a broader objective for us and wherein each goal can be divided into various objectives which are very specific and they are short term. Now, there is an example of objectives from Steel Authority of India Limited. Let us see how this organization has highlighted its objectives. So, the current strategies of sale expressed in form of objectives are first to protect market share and grow by focusing on increasing share in growth segment. So, this is the first target or first objective to build customer centric process, systems, structure and procedures. So, thinking about self growth by the organization, thinking about benefit to society where the customer is the part of society, to maintain financial health and rational investment in controlled borrowings. So, this is about sustainability of the organization. Here sale has expressed with the help of objectives how the organization can have specific and focused achievement of goals and objectives in their organization. Objectives are steps in reaching goal related to specific task or purpose. Now what do we mean by this? That means that they must also be time limited and measurable. 
when objectives are time limited and measurable they help us to achieve the specific task also the for instance the annual objectives of organization play a pivotal role in accomplishment of their strategic goals well defined and well de designed objectives are accurately measured and are linked to organization's long term goal so if we have an objective which is well defined and designed it becomes easier for the organization to reach to their long term goals also annual objectives they identify precisely what must be accomplished each year hence giving a smaller target in order to achieve the organization major goals in this process they also provide managers with specific targets for coming years performance so these are the benefits in one way of having objectives in the organization objectives further in the organization can be broadly classified into task objectives and process objectives now students when we talk about task objectives and process objectives what is the difference between the two the term itself suggests us that what are the activities to be carried out belong to the task objectives and process objective is what could be various how these activities can be put into different steps which are interdependent and interrelated to each other thus it becomes a process let us study in detail the task and the process objectives so the task objectives concentrate on completion of specific tasks like production of specific quantity of particular brand within a predetermined time period so for example in covid times we need to had mask on a regularity basis so specific task was coming up with production of mask at a particular scale so that we get get those number of mask in the desired timeline so timeline also plays a role in specific tasks while the process objective focus on means that are necessary for completion of these tasks so these are the steps involved in completion of task objectives it is to be noted here students that some management authors differ with the view that fulfillment of objectives are the means to realizing the goals of organization so they do not believe in that if you fulfill the goals you are able to achieve or they are the means to realize the final target of organization so according to them goals are very specific and short term while the objectives are used to indicate the end point of management program so this is a small difference of opinion that exists between various researchers and scientists to sum up this uh, content that we have discussed today i have a story of india's inspirational manager today we are going to discuss about ms indra noe who is the chairman of chief executive officer of pepsico company she became the first female to lead the company that ranked 41st in fortune 500 list company now why am i discussing here because we need to discuss the style of the manager what she as manager she took up different perspectives which made the organization come into the fortune 500 list she has been successful direct successfully directing the company's goal strategies and programs for more than a decade and she also designed the major restructuring program of the company including its divestiture and acquisition program also the crux of her administrative strategy was what were the favorite concepts that she utilized included adaptability performance with purpose and performing while transforming
students these are very important concepts to learn from the manager who has been highly successful at the senior or top position in organization that how you need to be adaptable you have to perform with a purpose in mind and performing while transforming the organization she explained performance with purpose as doing what is right for business by doing what's right for people so here equal importance to production and people was given by miss nui another aspect of her uh, leadership or quality of hers was that she specifically focused on areas of environmental sustainability environmental sustainability talent sustainability also which is highly solicited and health and wellness of the employees who are working in organization she believed in scanning with open eyes that is being always alert in the business world and find out what others are doing approaching every situation with open ears following adaptive leadership which is to approach things with an open mind and finally building an adaptive culture which means leading with a open heart so these are the traits and characteristics students i would like you people to learn and imbibe from such a renowned personality miss indra nui where she focused on seeing herself identifying herself the kind of different scenarios which are occurring and then responding and reacting to it by transforming while performing by focusing on adaptability and leadership traits like performance with a purpose next we move on to approaches to planning now the purpose of planning is closely linked to an organization's internal and external environment right planning is bound to change as and when there are changes in organization's environment <coughs> so that means these changes in any of the environment would enable the manager to bring in change in the planning and years ago planning was viewed as a sole prerogative of top managers only top managers were the one who will think of or go ahead with planning rest have to only be the followers without with you know no role of employees all together in the beginning when the industrialization took place consequently traditional management adopted something called as a top down approach towards the planning so that was the first approach towards planning was that top management will plan and will disseminate the same to the down to the lower management this attitude of management later began to change with development of new management theories and entry of knowledge workers in the organization and so that means new theories and knowledge worker what is a knowledge worker here let's understand knowledge worker new theories like management by objective which we shall be studying and knowledge worker who's a knowledge worker who works in knowledge economy now what is a knowledge economy knowledge economy deals with creation of knowledge identification of knowledge and dissemination of knowledge where new policy policy frameworks theories testimonials new uh, identification of unknown knowledge which is existing see knowledge is already there in universe what we have to do it we have to identify it it exists and this is the job of the knowledge worker who is primarily a researcher a researcher who will identify the unknown in the environment and with the rise of knowledge worker the approach of top management to only plan was then modified and now firms strongly believe that planning can be effective and successful when only the employees are involved why employees are involved then planning can be more effective because they are the ones who are actually putting their efforts into the job they are into the operational work and tactical work they know what challenges and bottlenecks come while they are performing henceforth they are the ones who can give us the right kind of solution to various problems that they face in their day to day activities 
further to be effective and successful employees are now involved at every stage of planning process and along with top down approach to uh, approach for planning bottom up approach or responsibility approach has also been identified and the third kind of approach which has been identified is a blend of both that is top down policy and bottom up planning approach. Let us discuss these approaches one by one. The top down execution and responsibility approach is the traditional approach to planning as I mentioned earlier. Now here as per this approach planning is entirely the responsibility of the top management. Usually these kinds of organization keep an exclusive planning department to assist the management in formulating the plans. The planning department will have specialized people with the responsibility to develop plans, procedures and policies. In this approach, the plans developed by top management will be sent down the organizational hierarchy for execution. That, that is why it is called as top down approach. At lower level of management, these plans are customized to suit the needs of individual department and the merit of this approach is so it also has certain merits though we thought of that only top management is discussing or directing the lower management so it may be having some biased or subjective error but a merit of this approach is that it makes planning process systematic and well coordinated affair because top management knows that his job is to disseminate the policy and procedure while or the plan while the lower management knows that they have to execute it. So the chances of having a chaos between the two is eliminated or is reduced to a larger extent. The second approach that we have to discuss is the bottom up execution or responsibility approach. Now in this contemporary approach each department is assigned with the responsibility of developing and implementing plans according to the requirement. So here department will play the role of developing and implementing not the top management. Now this approach ensures that organization members at different levels are involved in the planning process. This is an important point here students at different level means at all the levels of the organization managers are involved in preparing the plans for the working goal achievement. Now Peter F. Drucker, one of the renowned researchers M identified MBO as a classical example of bottom up approach. In department centric planning, departmental issues get due attention. So this is the merit of bottom up execution, bottom up execution is uh, bottom down here the plan is being formulated and thus the due attention to any kind of departmental issue is given or the employees also get motivated to work harder for the success of the plan because they have been the part of the plan. They know how the plan has been made, they know the contingency. Probably when top management makes the plan, the employees may not feel that what could be the challenges that top management faced. Employee may have a feeling that our dues are not taken care properly or maybe our views were not taken care, we are having problem in executing this plan. They do not know what problems and challenges top management had to face while making such plans. Now since the employees are involved in this approach of bottom up execution approach for planning, they understand the nitty gritties of planning process and probably they are more adaptable towards the challenges which occur during this process. Now here, however, the limitation of this approach is that planning could become a costly affair for the organization. Why costly? Because here now multiple people of various departments are involved in the planning process. Further, it becomes necessary for each department also to give training to their employees so that they are well versed with how to plan at a departmental level. So this will also add cost to the planning process. The managers focus on core activities like production for manufacturing department to get they may get distracted due to the planning process. So since they have to get involved in the planning process so their core activity may get hampered or may get neglected. 
So, the department plans may not have the thoroughness and professionalism of centralized plans prepared by full flesh planning departments. So, all both the approaches have two faces of the coin, they have certain benefits and they have certain limitations of it itself. It depends on the organization again, the nature of work and size of organization that what kind of approach suits it better. For larger organizations, probably bottom up approach, uh, top down approach can be beneficial for smaller organizations, bottom up approach also can be worked on. The third approach that is top down policy and bottom up approach which is a blend approach. The purpose of this approach is to have the benefits of both top down as well as bottom up approaches. And in this approach a centralized department, so students here another department has come into the picture unlike respective departments, one department which is the centralized department will like planning department will develop the planning policy and guidelines to be followed by all functional departments. So, now the production manager or HR managers need not spend much time on planning, rather they will get plans made by a specialist centralized planning department where managers from both the categories that is from the functional department as well as that is line department or the top management will be sitting together to formulate such plans and then disseminate to each functional level. This approach makes planning a collective endeavor at all levels of management which has lot of merits of itself. So, conforming to these planning policies and guidelines each department then later on develop and implement their own plans. So, initially the centralized department will make their plans and then at department level the departments can develop their own plans in line with the centralized department work. This approach makes planning a collective endeavor and this approach can push up the cost of planning as people at different levels are involved in planning process. Thus we say that this approach ensures that plans are consistent and driven primarily by overall organizational interest and priorities. Why we say so? Because here both the parties that is top management and lower management is involved. Now we move on to the next step that is steps in planning process. A very important uh, concept if you remember in the previous session we had discussed about that plan uh, that uh, planning is a continuous process. Uh, step by step dynamic process and is a choice based activity. When we talked about choice based activity, we discussed that it has multiple steps and alternatives. So, let us see what are different steps in the process of planning. The first step is determining organizational goals and objectives, discovering the environmental changes, developing the alternatives. Now, detailing the alternatives after developing them, deciding the best alternative, coming up with a plan and an outcome of the plan. Let us discuss these one by one in detail. First is determining the organizational goals and objectives. Now, in this the success of planning depends on ability of managers to set and achieve these goals. So, what is most important is how we are setting these goals and objectives. The organizational objectives should be set in key areas of operations. So, the first thing to be kept in mind while determining organizational goal and objective is that the key areas of operations are considered. At the first stage of planning, manager must analyze the mission statement of the organization to get inputs for goal setting and planning objective activities. So, mission statement is very important here to set the objectives. Further, the mission statement profoundly influences the planning operations by providing focus, direction and limits to it because we do not know how far we have to put a full stop on the kind of plans we are making. So, the goal is then focused, directed and within the limited boundaries with the help of mission statement. A well defined mission on basis becomes the basis for development of a subsequent goal and objectives. Here managers must also take into consideration the other influencing factors like environmental conditions, resource availability 
and employee skill while the manager is devising various goals and objectives these three considerations to be done so that right kind of goal is set managers also must ensure that goals are smart now what are smart goals students this means they are specific measurable attainable relevant also and time based so these are the characteristics of these goals to be met at the end of planning period manager must know whether they have accomplished the goals or not and for instance if the goal is to conduct a 40 hour training program for managers it is verifiable goals while in contrast if the goal is to develop better managers then it becomes a non verifiable goal because once the goal is framed manager gets clarity on their target time and distance so determining the organization goal and objective is highly important with this the manager knows what is the time frame and what are the resources to be utilize verifiable goals are very important important verifiable goal means measurable goals something which is vague statement cannot serve the purpose for a manager because he will then not be clear about the roles and responsibilities tomorrow that he has to focus on next step is discovering the environmental changes since we have to decide upon the goal for future we have to take into consideration what is happening in the environment around us thus once the goals are established managers should scan the internal and external environment to identify the factors which are facilitating or the factors which are blocking the goal achievement of course when you are scan the environment you will get to know that there this is something which is favoring and something which is a bottleneck to disturb the process so that needs to be identified so while evaluating the external environment manager must first study the changes in the macro environment that affect all forms of organization and industries so here the takeaway is the manager has to identify the changes taking place then the macro environment analysis normally involves what macro analysis will involve the analysis of social political legal and technological environment that has to be scanned well and then they should evaluate the changes in micro environment that comprises organizations belonging to particular industry and they must specifically look for information pertaining to customer attitude needs recent trends in technological development impact of technology as the existing product line cost of labor government policies legal constraints etc managers must then evaluate the internal environment of the organization now what do we say as part of the environment of as part of analysis of internal environment manager must consider the need for availability of various resources like in internal environment what are the financial resources available physical assets available human resource available time and information resources available to him now this this is how the information should enable them to recognize what the opportunities and threats in the environment that is the external environment and strengths and weaknesses in the internal environment so now they have large amount of information on which organizational environment has to do an analysis which is called as swot analysis we shall discuss this swot analysis later during the course by adopting appropriate forecasting techniques managers can predict the future trends and with fair degree of accuracy they can utilize them to accomplish the predetermined goals so this will be taken care during the course in next sessions but the analysis of internal and external environment enables the organization member to identify these key parameters 
the third step of planning process is now what we have done by now by now we have determined the goal of the organization and also we have discovered what kind of external and internal environment is taking place or is existing whether it is favorable or whether it is posing some threats the third stage of planning process is developing the alternatives now that we know the goal we have to identify what should be the direction or path or different alternatives which can lead us to that goal achievement in this once the environment is scanned and the trend is obtained managers should identify different alternatives to reach to the goal here the nature of goal what plays the role is nature of goal availability of information that we gathered in the previous step and third thing is the ability of manager if these are the controlling variables or the factors which will affect to identify the alternatives generated by the manager environmental analysis ensures that all possible alternatives are identified and included so that the best one can be chosen so through managers though managers intend on developing organization centered alternatives for goal accomplishment but certain general alternatives are also available so we have two types of alternative generated in this step one is organization centered and the other one are the general alternatives these generic alternatives which are general in nature can be applied to a wide variety of organizations so however the development of alternatives can be limited by certain things so what are the factors which limit the generation of alternatives first is the organizational objective which is very specific to specific organizations so their generic alternatives cannot play any role the specific philosophy of the organization or leadership and the policies of the organization that they have framed and finally the attitude of managers and employees that play a major role in identifying the right kind of alternatives after we have different alternatives with us now it is the time to have a detailed evaluation of each alternative now this detailed evaluation of each alternative relates to scenario generation that how alternative one will take us through which path and what scenario will be generated whether it is pessimistic optimistic etc what is going to be the outcome of each alternative and whether that outcome is leading to achievement of the goal that we determined in the very first step of the planning process so let us see the detailing of alternatives in this we have after managers develop all possible alternatives they do analysis of alternatives so what we call it as analysis of alternatives and this is called as aoa it's mentioned here aoa is the analytical comparison of multiple alternatives before choosing the best alternative so what we are doing we are doing an analysis of all the alternatives the alternative must be carefully analyzed in a systematic and logical way so that most suitable alternative can be chosen for the implementations so alternatives on hand can be evaluated by managers through qualitative and quantitative criteria so two criteria which can help us identify the alternatives qualitative and quantitative criteria so now here as part of qualitative analysis the strengths and weaknesses of each alternative are compared without the support of any numeric data and best choices made here we are talking about the qualitative analysis so in qualitative analysis we have more of concept with us and on the basis of concept we do the analysis it is actually the subjective analysis we also call it as a subjective analysis while in case of quantitative analysis alternatives are assigned with numeric values for comparison so for instance when 
sales turnover you have to identify or you have to find out net profit or maybe you have to identify the labor cost what are these they all are numeric data and alternatives are used for comparison it then becomes a quantitative analysis in course of evaluation of alternatives the performance of each alternative against the key parameter is assessed to identify the most viable and non viable alternative and finally the manager must spell out clearly the possible positive and negative aspects of each alternative especially as to how the alternative address the goal requirement addresses the goal requirement now since the detailing of alternative has already taken place and the manager by now knows what are going to be the possible outcomes of each alternative which has been discussed he now decides on the best alternative which is the final outcome probably of the process of planning before we go in for implementation so what happens it is not possible for manager to pick up all the alternatives so he reduces or leaves the alternatives with negative consequences and while choosing the best alternative manager must consider the views and opinions of higher authorities also employees and other participants too and then finally he may understand the decision involving the selection of best alternative has been the most crucial aspect of any pro possible process because the future of organization depends on this and then describing the plan details of the organizational planning process so once the best alternative has been decided then it must be implemented so plan detail means how we are going to implement the process or implement this particular plan so here managers must describe the goals and plans to employ in comprehensive and timely manner why so that to ensure the involvement and cooperation so that the execution of this particular plan is done properly and manager has to be aware that improper and inadequate information may result in employee mistrust and apprehension and thus the plan may the whole process of planning may go futile and finally discussing the plan outcome what is the final outcome or achievement of having this plan as executed so since planning is continuous activity of management plan monitoring and evaluation is very important and feedback is important that whether the alternative that we chose was appropriate or not whether it delivered the outcome which we had thought of whether the goal has been achieved or not so thus the manager has to check and ensure that the outcome has led to the achievement of desired goal the end of pe plan period evaluation can facilitate a thorough revision of future plans feedback from this particular plan execution helps us to not to repeat the issues or challenges or problems or mistakes that we did during the previous planning process so now we know that while formulating and implementing several plans at the time manager must ensure that different plans are properly balanced and integrated and they support one another and work in unison so these were about the steps in the planning let us now see the planning style of mr aditya birla from aditya birla group the aditya birla group has a corporate cell which provides a strategic overview to management and also acts as a corporate consultant for planning this corporate cell is multidimensional in nature as it attends to the plan needs of different group companies so we can see that such a renowned organization is also working through corporate consultant cell in order to have their properly devised plans so students now we can summarize what we have studied in today's session the classification and approaches to planning and steps in the planning process which says that planning helps in improving the performance it enables a proactive approach in the organization it is a future focused management technique it also helps in better coordination amongst all levels of the management and controlling technique it enhances the communication in the organization and involvement of the organizational members it also enables to have highest amount of decision making that is the precise decision making and cost effectiveness can be 
achieved with the help of right kind of planning process. It provides legitimacy to the process of the organizational functioning. This was all students about the classification and approaches to planning. I hope you have understood this concept. We shall be taking it further in our future sessions. Thank you. Thank you.